Welcome to a, another podcast of the Dynamic Chiropractic Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Holm. Thank you for your time today. Uh, it's a Saturday. Uh, I appreciate it. I know, like I said earlier, you could probably be doing something better with your time. Um, but the fact that you're here today, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. So thank you. Yeah, no, uh, talking chiropractic is uh, never gets boring. So uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me on. No problem at all. So Stephen, just for the listeners, if you're able to just tell them a bit about yourself um, and also how you got into chiropractic. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am currently practicing in Oxfordshire and been uh, at this practice for about a year now. And uh, yeah, I've been practicing around about five years um, and I am a third generation chiropractor. So chiropractic really runs in my family. Um, started with my granddad who went to study in Iowa under BJ. Um, no way. Yeah. So it's really awesome. cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so that would have been, I think it was in the, it must have been in the 1940s or uh, yeah, I think it must have been 1940s. Um, so that was before there was any chiropractic college in uh, the UK. And um, uh, so then he practiced in Manchester for a very long time. And uh, and then my auntie, so um, his daughter, uh, took uh, also took into chiropractic and uh, then ended up working with him. And then he passed away late 90s. And uh, now she runs and still runs that practice in Manchester. So that practice wow. has been a um, very long time now uh, with a long legacy. So I got into chiropractic. Um, well, funny enough, I got actually I actually got into chiropractic. Uh, it started with watching uh, House. I don't know if you know the um, the series, House with I've Hugh heard of it. Yeah. yeah it's it's a great series i watched it when i was a teenager and i've watched it many times since it's, it's essentially a diagnostic um um series that uh obviously a medical doctor and uh as this genius doctor and i just really liked the diagnostic side and the kind of genius part of it and how he was able to crack cases that no one else could so that really inspired me to think ah, oh, I, I would love to do that kind of thing also i knew it wasn't going to be quite like that um, and it was obviously made uh, a show that was made to um, entertain, but uh, it made me got into uh, medicine uh, or uh, the idea of being a medical doctor. And that was fairly short until um, I started to consider chiropractic because during my teenage years, I was treated uh, by my auntie. And so we, we lived in the in the South, so we didn't see her that often, but we went up a few times a year and we would often get treatment from her. And I had a, a back issue. I had um, headache issues uh, throughout my, my teenage years, which was uh, very successfully and, and quickly sorted by her. So, uh, so, and so I just loved the hands-on aspect of chiropractic and it just offered something that was different to anything else. And uh, I remember uh, as I was a teenager and obviously having a more limited mind at that point, I was thinking, why, why is it why doesn't everybody know about chiropractic um it it, it is it just seems illogical that uh, people don't go to chiropractic was kind of my mindset and uh and i still you know i still believe that i still think that everyone should go to chiropractic because um, there's so much uh, so much power that can be offered um by it but um so yeah so that's that's basically how i got into it so i was basically inspired by my auntie and uh and through her treatment uh, and then, yeah, went went to college in uh, about 2014. Amazing. Oh, mm. that. What's the name of the practice that your aunties uh, runs? Uh, good question. <laughs> it's um, it worked. I think it worked a bit differently um back in the day. It doesn't necessarily have much of a name. It's uh, just under her name, uh, which is uh, Dr. Hume, uh, Dr. Bernice Hume um so it's a uh, referral only only practice and you wouldn't even know there's a practice there it's not like she has uh, any advertising any signs or anything like that it's basically like in a um uh but uh in a in quite a nice um, house building so it's uh, doesn't even look like it's commercial um but yeah because it's been there so long it's built up such a great referral and uh yeah quite a large uh waiting list uh, and and, that, and that's that's always inspired me for how I want to do practice. I just love that referral only. Um, you know, you 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 build a practice based on excellence, 
um that's what i really love yeah so so name i'm not sure <laughs> i think it's her name <laughs> no worries that's all good and yeah. do you remember what she used to practice did she diversify did she do uh, i guess obviously practicing under uh under bj i'm guessing it all toggle or do you remember what it was yeah so so my granddad studied under bj and my auntie went to aecc in bournemouth um so she she would have graduated uh late 1980s um she does variety of techniques so uh, toggle is is her main one a little bit diversified i believe but what really um sets her apart is her um expertise in functional neurology she studied under um uh, Car uh ted carrick in uh, america and um and yeah, she's, she's, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, I guess passed her uh, test, et cetera, um, in functional neurology. So she, she's basically a, a, very much a specialist in that, in that area. Um, so she treats a lot of, um, uh, I suppose, uh, complex neurological cases, but integrates it into everyday practice um, to, to guide her treatment. Amazing. Wow. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, just going back to your little, like your studying and, um that sort of part of your life um how did you how did you find that going from being a student and that transitioning uh, out into the real world oh yeah horrendous <laughs> <laughs> uh nothing nothing i think prepares you to um suddenly going by yourself in practice and uh yeah i would say particularly the first couple of years was uh very very difficult and um I many many times I've I thought to myself I just wish I had a simple job I don't know uh, yeah to do something very simple and not have to uh, uh, have that risk that level of responsibility I don't think I think I underestimated the level of responsibility but also um, it's you have to be you have to get used to um, uh, the the highs and the lows and um, there's more lows when you're not very good uh, at the beginning which doesn't inspire you very much uh, but fortunately, as you start to get better, um, I think every year I've been in practice, um, the more I've enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, it's more enjoyable, the, the better I get. But it was hard at the beginning, for sure. I would not uh, understate that. No, absolutely. Yeah. And mm. what advice would you give to, uh, let's say, um, maybe last year, uh, chiropractors or even new graduates mm. uh, sort of heading out? Yeah, I, I think my number one advice, uh, and it's something that I um, underestimated at the time, which has probably made it a lot harder for me than anything else, um, is to find a mentor that you can listen to. So um, there's going to be lots of great mentors out there, but um, you won't necessarily uh, listen to all of them, depending on what direction they're trying to take you in. So obviously, as you get to the end of college, you're going to have a certain um, belief and philosophy in chiropractic. And so I think the practice that you go to, you need, need needs to needs to align with your values and that philosophy. Um, otherwise, you are going to get advice, you're going to struggle to follow. So for example, I went into a practice that um, was a high high volume practice and um really high emphasis on um high numbers and and um high amounts of treatments for each person and um and and i got some good training in the sense of communication but i felt that there was um way way more way more training in regards to how to get people how to sell chiropractic uh, to get the most amount of money from each person rather than how to be the best chiropractor um so I actually find it for me, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that just for me, it didn't didn't quite align essentially is my point there. And um, I think that just made it um, really hard to be able to uh, take on everything that he was saying because um, it wasn't really the direction I wanted to go in. So um, I think if I was going to do it again, I would seek out a, uh, a mentor that just aligned much better with me or take more time on that. I think also I wanted to stay in Bournemouth at that time as well. So I managed to find a practice that had um, essentially a Gonstead setup and it had x-rays and that's that's the setup I really wanted. So that and so that was really nice. And that's not even something I have right now um, to the same degree. Uh, so that's what that's what I missed about that place. But um, I think I was kind of um, put in the location and the equipment above the mentor. And I would say put your mentor above um, everything else, even if it means you have to um, move for that. Because the first two years, as I say, really um, 
is going to align how you're going to practice for the rest of your your career um so you really want to get it right at the start but also i do know there's lots of chiropractors that um don't last that long that will uh, leave chiropractic because it doesn't it's not very fun and i can completely understand that because i was in that similar situation at times where i just felt so low um and wasn't feeling like i, I didn't have the confidence wasn't feeling like i was getting the results um and i think if i didn't have a, a strong enough motivation underlying why i got into chiropractic i i, I may have been one of them and i'm so glad I, I i didn't but um so yeah so i think that's really important because if you don't get good quick enough then i think you're at risk of um going down a bad path or or maybe leaving altogether so fundamental absolutely and I, yeah. I completely agree with uh, everything that you just said that's absolutely fantastic advice and yeah. i'm really glad that you you stuck with it and uh, you carried on with chiropractic so that's great and i don't want you to quote me on this but i did i did hear that there is i, I don't know what sort of year i think it's anywhere between sort of like three to five years um after graduating that tends to be the highest point of dropping out where people then tend to stop being a chiropractor uh, and then they, I guess they then go on to find other professions, uh, which is a real shame. Um, mm. I guess the reasons vary amongst um, uh, different people, but uh, yeah, it's just a shame that the, the dropout rate is just so high. Uh, you know, so, um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, um, that, that, I yeah, I totally agree with that. It's, um, I, and I think that's that for. for for chiropractors that are out and do feel like they can give something i i really um, respect those that are uh, trying to help uh the the ones graduating to get through it because we need chiropractors we need way more people we don't have enough chiropractors to serve the the amount of people that that really need it and uh and, and good chiropractors as well so yeah very yeah, true yeah and it's, it's important to stay up to date and stay relevant and um, just keep on improving on yourself so then that way you can keep on helping others so, mm. uh, one thing i wanted to uh, backtrack to but obviously just went over briefly about uh, beliefs and philosophy what is what is your what is your philosophy what's your belief in chiropractic yeah it's an interesting question um i would i would say that i really value and center myself around the power of the chiropractic adjustment i think that the adjustment and particularly the chiropractic adjustment so so not manipulation but but the adjustment and the specificity that we can apply as chiropractors is uh, one of the most valuable uh, tools that we um, have and something that no other profession does as well as us Um, and and more than that, I think that the specificity in, in the way that we apply the adjustment um, is is what I think sets the best chiropractors apart. Um, by and 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 chiropractors do this in way uh, in so many different ways. My auntie would practices fairly differently to me. We are, we don't do the same technique, but what but what is uh, very similar and what I am always inspired by her is her specificity in the way that she is um, applying a treatment to get a change so and this is what's very cool about functional neurology is that they will do a certain test and these uh, all tests that most chiropractors well not all not all the tests they do but a lot of the tests are recognized by a lot of the chiropractors of fairly basic neurological tests like you know looking at eye pursuits or stockades um, but looking at the functional changes and to look at this function applying some treatment and then retesting those things to see whether you actually had a positive change or what can happen is you can have a negative change as well. Um, so, yeah, I I, I have a, a strong belief in the specificity of of how we um, uh, adjust people to get uh, the functional uh, restoration changes that uh, those people are after, um, and and basically just trying to be as good as I can be at it. Um, so I do that through the Gonstead uh, method, and. Um, yeah and still learning still trying to get better at, at doing that that's good well we're on the, the subject of gone said it's not a, a technique that i'm uh too familiar with but i i, I know it's a very well used uh, technique can you go a little bit more into detail mm. um, behind that 
Yeah, so um, Clarence, I, I, I like it. So, someone uh, described it uh, like this, that um, which I thought was quite cool, that uh, Didi Palmer was the uh, creator of chiropractic. BJ was the pioneer and uh, and Gonstead was the refiner. And I, I quite like that um, because Gonstead really, he was quite, um, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, he was quite um, prolific in our um, profession. And um, what he did was quite uh, incredible in the way that he um, refined the chiropractic technique to a level that I don't think chiropractors had seen at that point. And that was then reflected in um, his practice. He had one of the biggest, uh, and maybe that practice, I'm, I'm not sure, but it may be one of the largest uh, in the world, maybe. Uh, particularly in terms of size, it's a, an incredibly huge uh, building. And uh, and particularly when Gonstead was there, the amount of patients uh, that he saw, and, and the average patient would travel 100 miles just to see him. Um, so yeah. that's that's testament to his, um, his the results that he was getting. Um, so 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 then from there, people were like, well, um, why is it that you're so busy and, and everyone else isn't so busy? What is it that you're doing? And, and you need to teach us uh, what what you're doing. Um, so from there, then they, they created the concert seminars and have been then taught since. And so that must have been going, I would assume, 70 years, maybe, maybe plus. Um, but his, so his approach, uh, so it starts with the analysis as a five-step uh, analysis approach. So quite often, pretty much all chiropractors will use motion palpation. So that's one part of the analysis. But I think what Gunther did was to, to really make it more specific was to say, right, so uh, we set the spine with motion palpation and maybe we have five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds that are restricted. Um, not all of them are necessarily going to be the problem and not all of them, if we adjust them, is going to have a positive result. So how do we choose which one we should adjust for each person? So we created a... Um, uh, five-step analysis which is visualization visualization so basically the observation again that's just something i think a lot of chiropractors do um to see for um changes in the structure of the spine um changes in the skin um edema swelling etc um second part is in the static palpation so feeling the, the spine in a static palpation in a static position feeling for that uh, swelling feeling for the uh, texture of the skin um the third one then will be the motion palpation so looking at the um how the joints are moving fourth one then is the instrumentation which is um i believe what what Gonstead was uh, brought into the profession and that's the nervoscope which is essentially just um a heat differentiation tool so you run it along the spine and uh, you're looking to see whether there is more heat on one side compared to the other. And essentially, the when you have a, um, a subluxation or a dysfunction in a joint, you're going to have more um, inflammation in that joint, and that's going to come up with more heat in that area. So you run it down and you look for that. And then the fifth and final part of that analysis is the x-rays. So you use the first four parts to find out uh, where is the problem. And so ideally you want as many of those um, steps to align as possible, which then is gonna give you the most confidence that this is the, the primary issue that we're dealing with. Um, and then the x-rays can be used then to um, analyze that, that joint and to see what position exactly is it in, and then the best line of drive to make that correction. Um, so it basically helps you to paint a clearer picture of what you're trying to do. So, uh, that's, that's basically Don said in a nutshell. And so, so the adjustment then is, um, uh, applied to them, make that correction. Uh, and typically Gonzo, uh, Gonzo practitioners would tend to not adjust as many. And I think that the better from what I hear, and that's, it's been the case with me, I think the, the better, the, uh, uh, the better you get, I think, the less you tend to have to do because you're better at identifying exactly which joint is the problem, which area of the spine is the problem. And if you can find that one primary area, um, then you don't necessarily need to do all the other areas. No, no, I completely agree. And that is, um, so I thank you for that, this, uh, for the explanation of the, of the Gonstead technique. That's, that's amazing. Um, definitely something I want to, I want to look into a lot further. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting you say that because, I can, or you might have seen it yourself, but, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I see videos on social media of other chiropractors like adjusting, but you see them like do anywhere between like seven, 10 or even more adjustments, which almost tends to seem a little bit excessive. 
Whereas mm. uh, I don't know about yourself, but I found that over time, um, especially when I when I first started learning diversified, I'll try and adjust absolutely everything that I could. Um, mm. But it's only really been more recently where I've actually just narrowed down the adjustments. And um, now I, I probably do anywhere between maybe three to even five adjustments, um, mm. probably no more than that. And mm. the, and even the results, they just, you know, they, they've gotten better, if anything, mm. um, which is, which is good, which is what we want to see. So, but a lot of that, I guess, is down to sort of indo- individual belief, uh, I guess, in yourself and your, your own capabilities as well, um, mm. which is, which was interesting because I know you said, um, obviously Gonstead wanted to, uh, obviously people wanted to teach him like, uh, they want them him to teach them sort of his technique like what are you doing how are you seeing so many people do you think that was just down to the technique or do you think that was also down to Gonstead himself as well yeah I, I do think it's like most uh, something that I've noticed um, is that people that are exceptional tend to be a little bit crazy um yeah. And the thing about Gunstead is he worked a crazy amount of hours. Um, I, I think I, I I may be wrong, but I think it got to the point it destroyed his marriage. I think because um, uh, he was working six days a week, he would start at something like eight in the morning, finish like ten at night. Um, so he he was really working like constantly. He was obsessed, and I think to be a, a great a great at anything, you, you obviously the more time you spend on it, the the better you're going to be um and so that that is part of it but i think it was more his attitude and his belief and it all starts with belief doesn't it he believed that um if we can get more specific than where we are and create more specific uh and better adjustments then we can get better results and i think that belief led him to becoming more and more specific better chiropractor which then led to better results the problem i think lies is if you don't believe that specificity matters, then you're not going to um, get more specific because why would you? If you don't believe that that's, uh, that matters, you're going to stay as general as possible. And then when you don't get the results, you're you're going to put that down to other things. Um, not to say that um, it's, it's always down to specificity. Sometimes um, there may be other things going on, but um, I think it has to start with that belief. And I've certainly found that um, uh, going back to what you're saying with the amount of, amount of adjustments that uh, that we do with someone, um, I think it comes down to the confidence of where that problem is. And I think that when we start off, and I was the same, um, our palpation's not very good, our observation's not very good, our x-ray reading's not very good. So your analysis isn't so good, so therefore you don't have the certainty um, when you're making the adjustments or when you're doing the analysis. So you try to go with a shotgun approach and do as many adjustments as possible um, to hopefully uh, hit the right point. Um, and I think uh, the best example um, is Dr. Ian Rossborough on uh, YouTube. Um, he did that famous video of the guy, the, um, I think it was an Indian guy that was hunched over after pulling a tree root and, um, uh, yeah, I know the one you're on about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think everyone's seen it because every one of his videos went viral. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, he, and, but if you see his videos, okay, this, this particular guy was actually an exception, but all the, I think all the other videos, or at least 95% of them, he only did one adjustment. Um, because he had the certainty that this was a problem and he saw the immediate results yeah. um this other guy was a bit a bit of an exception i think you might have saw maybe two or three but still that's a lot less than most of us do <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely and is um, uh, um correct me if i'm wrong but is uh, dr ian does he practice gone said as well is he yes yeah so so he's he's a perfect example of a, a pure gone practitioner um he he applies it to the T, I would say, and he, he, I would say he's, from my point of view, he's the best chiropractor on the internet, <laughs> and maybe one, and probably one of the best I've seen. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he's incredible. Awesome. And um, while we're on the note of uh, other chiropractors, is there anyone that you'd also look out for? Anyone that you'd recommend? Anyone uh, for other sort of students and other new chiropractors to look out for? 
what in regards to on the internet or yeah or just in general sort of like learning um just mm. anything about chiropractic the philosophy art science etc hmm good question um i for me i've so in terms of material um i one of the best uh, materials i is the gunster chapters uh, so the gunster science and art um basically goes through and uh, walks through step by step the uh, mechanics of the spine the um uh, way to uh, analyze that first step process and the way to adjust the spine um there isn't that many guns that uh, chiropractors in the uk um there's actually only really a handful and um there's actually not that many that practice it uh, that purely either. So you kind of have, I think, di different levels. A lot of people, I think, kind of dabble in it or do do bits of it. So it's somewhat of like a... Like um, a but there's a lot... Of yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of people, they might just learn a little bit at, at college and then kind of put that together with, with other techniques. Um, yeah. Uh, for, for me, I, I kind of started like that in a way. And uh, I don't know the the better i get the the more pure i go and i think it's just because i get better at the system if you're not it's a hard system and i think if you're not very good at it um then you're not going to see the results and so therefore you kind of try to supplement it with other things yeah absolutely yeah i agree and again what one uh one subject that i wanted to talk about um was uh precise chiro seminars Mm. um what was it uh that led you to bring that about what, what was what was the idea behind that or the inspiration yeah so um that was started by myself and uh chiropractor i was at college with uh dr matt Hiding. um we we kind of for quite a while i think had the idea of we like to um uh, start teaching seminars and kind of give back and, and really help chiropractic students um give them the help that we had and the help that we didn't have um and and the main purpose of of these seminars is to help chiropractors and chiropractic students to become more precise in their analysis and the adjustment of the spine to really show them the power of the adjustment and how and why specificity matters so um we started just over a year ago and um yeah our main focus is to teach the analysis and to teach teach the specificity of the adjustment using the gun system um so we've done so far two seminars in bournemouth and we've got another one in a few weeks where's uh what, what's the day time and uh, location of your next seminar yeah, so we are doing it at the Village Hotel in Bournemouth um, on the 11th of February, Saturday the 11th. Um, so that'll be the whole day. Um, so we got our tickets on Ticket Taylor, um, but you can also see it on our on our Instagram, um, uh, which is uh, Precise Cairo Seminars. Nice. I'll make sure to uh, to put that in the uh, the information uh, at the end, so people can follow and also keep track of upcoming events as well. So, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. And at the seminars, is it again? Is it primarily? Is it just Gonstead based? Is that is that the again just going through the steps of the the protocol that you use? Yeah. So the seminar, there is six of us on the team. So um, there's. Uh, Matt and myself, but there's also uh, two chiropractors we get over from Norway. Um, oh, wow. There's Dr. Dr. Kent Edland, um, who was who taught at the AECC in Bournemouth for um, uh, just under thirty years. He's not there anymore, but he's uh, joined us with the with the seminars, and he was a mentor to me, and uh, really the, uh, a big reason why I got into into Gunstead. Um, so he has a huge amount of experience, and we've also got Dr. Sariot, who's in um, practicing in Bournemouth. He also went to college with me. Uh, and uh and i think that's it yeah so two from norway me matt uh sarit and uh and uh, dr Ket um so yeah so we so we are quite um uh we like to have uh, as much one-to-one -one, um uh, coaching as possible so that's why we have a fairly big team um so so yeah amazing cool that's great i hope to uh one day join you guys um yeah, yeah absolutely welcome yeah yeah, yeah. Well, uh, i've heard good things about bournemouth as well um i've only ever I, I visited once um when i was back in college um it's a beautiful building 
really beautiful day. So yes, I think I think it was an old nunnery actually. So uh, yeah, it's been been a long time. I think that was, I think it was the sixties, and they may have moved into that building a little bit after that. But uh, the cottage has been there a long time. Yeah. So, but yeah, Bournemouth, beautiful area of the world. So always worth a visit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. what made you? Uh, I know you said you mentioned you were in Bournemouth, and now you're in Oxford. What yeah. uh, What made you create? Uh, or what made you uh, basically do the move from Bournemouth to Oxford? Well, um, going on from what we were discussing at the very beginning, um, I I didn't join the the, the most ideal practice for me at, at the very beginning. So I ended up moving um, practices for a month. So I started in Bournemouth and I went to work with uh, someone in Aylesbury um, who, who practiced concert and I learned a fair amount from him. But then um, COVID hit. So I kind of left that after that and uh, I just went back home for a while. Um, then I spent some time with my auntie um, for a few months and then I'm ba- mainly landed in Oxfordshire, uh, mainly due to uh, my wife. <laughs> um, so the the initial crazy plan uh, for us was that because she was doing her nursing, uh, still is actually in um, where we currently are. And uh, so the, the plan was that how I, uh, I would uh, uh, start practicing uh, with my auntie in Manchester. Uh, she'll be down here. We'll get married first two years. We'll sp- spend a part and then she'll draw me in Manchester. And then I think fairly quickly we we realized that's uh, that'd be a big mistake. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, yeah, and, and I thought, hold hold on a sec. I think I'm prioritizing my career over my marriage, which I I don't yeah. uh, agree with here. <laughs> so um, so therefore ended back in or oh, ended in um, Oxfordshire. Um, so yeah, I I didn't exactly join it. I didn't uh, join the practice I'm in for the practice. I joined it really more for the convenience of the location. Uh, but actually, it's turned up fairly well um so far so yeah it's, it's marriage <laughs> yeah that's good to know and if people want to uh come and see you uh where is your uh where is your uh, clinic located what's its name well so i'm working with the medical um in in Dicot, Oxfordshire, at the moment um yeah so but in due time i will uh, like to start my own practice uh, at some point but um okay. i don't know when that will be yet so yeah. oh, that's exciting times yeah indeed yeah 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 I did. and just while we've got um a little bit of time um just before we finish up are you able just to give us some details on uh, where people can reach out to you uh where can they follow you on social media etc yeah so uh, we have um an instagram as mentioned before uh, with uh, precise Cairo seminars um, so that's where uh, people can kind of keep up to date with our seminars. And we also give uh, videos on um, uh, pieces of advice on, on particularly in terms of adjusting and analyzing the spine. Um, I have my own Instagram, uh, Dr. Hume, uh, DR under, underscore Hume. Um, so that's um, really more for, for patients to keep up to date with um, what I'm doing clinically um that's probably the 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 best way um i've also have started my own website about a month ago which is uh, just dr stephen uk. um so again that's more uh patient based so yeah in- instagram seems to be the easiest way these days uh, but yeah. also on, on linkedin and facebook yeah yeah awesome all right i'll be uh i'll be sure to put that down in the in the description box so that's cool um Dr. Stephen, I've, I've really, really enjoyed our, our chats today. You've given some absolute dimes, and uh, I know a lot of people will learn a lot from this podcast. So um, I just want to say again, thank you for your time today, and um, I look forward to uh, hopefully meeting you uh, in person in the future. Mm. Yeah, a- absolutely pleasure. Thank you for inviting me on, and uh, you're doing a great work with the with the podcast. So keep it going. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, so I'll let you carry on. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll speak soon. Thanks, Jack. Bye bye. All right, take care. Cheers.